Hey, uh, welcome back to Farmsland Farms and today I'm going to talk about how we raise our hogs. So just like the goats where we move them uh, every so often, with the goats specifically we move them once per day, with the hogs uh, we still move them, they're on a routine. It's not as quick as with the goats because with the goats of course like I just said we're moving them every day with the hogs, we move them between every three to five days. Uh, ideally. Now right here as you can see they're really good tillers so they've just torn up this ground a lot but uh, that's partly because we've left them on there longer than I, I would like. These hogs have been on this particular paddock for six days. If you leave them on too long the and you can see they're starting to mate these are our brood hogs and I'll get to that in a bit. If you leave them on too long, you'll get it to where they actually start polluting the ground through their manure. They'll come out and it smells really bad. These here right now, they don't smell bad at all. I can't smell anything. Um, but if you left them on too long, ammonia would start to build up. And if you have ammonia, which is a compound of nitrogen and hydrogen, you're just losing fertilizer uh, because it's all going into the atmosphere. Secondly, if you have ammonia smells, you're probably, um, some is running off into the water supply too. Second thing is hogs are really good at compacting the dirt. So if you hold them on a paddock for too long, they'll start compacting the dirt. It'll get really hard. Uh, if it's in the sun, it'll start baking the clay. Okay. So right now I'm going to show you how I move them. So we got a, it hooked up to an electric fence. And I plan on that being my next video, is how we uh, run our electric fence. The fence is off. <laughs> the fence is off. Um, but here is how we connect it to these split bolts. I'm just going to screw off these split bolt connectors. This uh, insulated wire goes to our main lines that are connected to the electric fence box. And we have this rope that we can electrify. I'm just going to take it all down. Depending on where you're at, these poles might change in price. But where I'm from, in uh, near Lumberton, North Carolina, these costed two dollars a piece at the Agri Supply. So I'm just going to take this rope wire off these poles. Oh, come on now, Ben. There we go. So once that has been done, I'm going to roll it up on this uh, roll bar right here. And the hogs get really scared of the, the, the rope because it's been shocking them if they get too near it. So I would like to walk around the perimeter uh, so as not to drag the rope near the hogs. Once that has been completed, I'll dump out the water. 
It's about 10 gallons right there. And I'll take their feed trough and move it to the front. And come over here and see all of this uh, deer tongue, bluebells, and the uh, early side and privet. And this is what they're going to get moved on to. So I'm just going to drag it, these hog panels, forward. You can start to see them. wagging their little tails so you know they're happy. Next what I'll do is I'll get the poles back. So these right here I can just take them in right to the side where they used to be. These two, I do have to walk back and get them. Let's go walk back and get the roll. When I put these poles down, what I want to do is make sure that the next pole, uh, the line that goes in between them, uh, isn't going to touch this. Because this obviously conducts electricity, and we don't want the wire to short out on it. So I'll move it up a little bit. We do two strands. That's because we don't want them stepping over the electric fence or stepping or trying to crawl underneath. Switch the setting on the roll. On the, uh, roll. Guess I didn't switch it good enough. So that's on the lowest setting of the uh, of the poles. When I come back to the first one, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put it on the second lowest setting, then come up to the fourth setting, and then continue on with the fourth setting for the rest of the pole.
when I come back here, put it on the fifth setting. Lock it back into place, get it taut, and hang it on the hog panel. Uh, you, got, you got to make sure that this metal piece does not touch the hog panel because if it does, it will actually short out um, on the hog panel. And that's that's the system. Uh, I, all I have to do now is reattach the electric wire to the uh, to this and feed them and water them and they're, they'll be good. The benefits to this are one, uh, it decreases a lot of the food that you're going to have to feed the hogs. Uh, the winter of 2019, I did kind of an accidental experiment where I didn't have enough uh, fencing to put two out on this mobile system, two, two sets of hogs. So I had one set of hogs on this mobile system and another set of hogs in confinement. The ones in confinement were were very young. They were true piglets, very small. But they ate like 10 pounds worth of feed per day. Well, whereas the other hogs ate four pounds of feed per day. And they were grown adult hogs about ready to be sent on the market. And so that's a major difference. If you have these adult hogs who, you know, they, they might actually be eating more per pound of total feed per day. Uh, and I'm only supplying four pounds of that out of my own pocket versus these small piglets who probably aren't eating as much total feed as the adult ones. Um, they're eating 10 pounds per day out of my own pocket. Uh, so this saves you a lot of money. Second thing, getting them moved around reduces parasite risk. So I don't worm these at all. These are my two, again, these are my two brood, brood hogs. Uh, they are just happy and healthy, getting to play around uh, in the woods. Uh, a few more uh, pieces of, of advice with this system. One is fencing. I've tried the uh, polynet system. With piglets, they seem to get out with that. Um, they don't realize that they uh, pigs most of the time, as long as they realize that they're going to be happy inside a pen, they won't get out. Unlike a goat, whereas the goat just will want to get out no matter if it's uh, if it has all the nutrition it needs and all the space it needs inside a pen, it still wants to get out. A hog will realize that it's actually having a better life inside the pen than outside, so they'll usually stay in. Piglets don't seem to realize that, so I wouldn't put um, piglets on a a netting, an electrified netting. I've done it before and it works and I've done it before and they get out. And chasing hogs is no fun, absolutely no fun. So this two system model of the hog panels combined with this electric rope, that has done the trick. I don't think we've ever had them get, get out with these two implements as fencing. Uh, secondly, I said before in my videos that if I were to start out with animals or farming, I would start out with rabbits in a garden, and in fact, that's that's what I did start out with was rabbits in a garden. The the third thing that I would add would be hogs, just because they are they make the most money on the farm for me than any other other uh, animal or 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 thing plant uh, that I grow. Uh, people love sausage and pork chops and pork ribs and everything like that so they make a lot of income for me and so if you're starting out hogs will probably be where you get most of your income from for the first few years um and with that i don't think i have anything else to say so i'm sorry i'm late with my videos i tried to put one at the last day of every month and in august i just got swamped so the August video was late and was put out in October and this should have been the September video but I hope to get more on track and next time we should be talking about how I set up my um, electric fences okay so I hope you have a great day bye guys